let's shift and take a look now at the final type of user-defined function, the multi-statement. Multi-statement, user-defined function, multi-statement, table-valued function, whatever you want to call it here. Now, it's the first difference you note is in the name. Remember what the alternative name for an inline function was? It's also called a single statement, right? So then this is a multiple statement. So let's just write out a couple of little differences here. So inline UDFs, TVFs, whatever, can only include a single statement. And it has to be a select statement. Okay. No declaring of variables, no if statements, um, things like that. We can't do that. We can do common table expressions. Uh, we can do case to do some sort of branching logic within the query, but we cannot actually declare variables, uh, do if statements, or normal control of flow language. Okay. Multi-statement UDFs can do almost anything a stored procedure can do which I know we haven't really covered store procedures, so that's kind of a hollow uh, analogy there. Um, so maybe we could, let me say this. So multi-statement UDFs can include variables, um, control of flow operators, uh, meaning like, you know, if, uh, begin, and else, things like that. Um, Okay, so more than a single statement, I guess, would be the, the point here. Okay. The only thing, they cannot update the database in the code. Okay, So you cannot, in a multi-statement UDF, and the same thing goes for scalar functions. Okay. You cannot issue an insert, update, or delete statement against a table in the database. Cannot modify the database inside the code of a multi statement UDF. When we get to talking about insert, update, and delete, we will revisit this topic because you can modify the database when you call an inline UDF, but you cannot include insert, update, and delete statements that modify the database in the actual body of the function. I'll show you here in just a second, okay? Um, now, there's a little bit of a difference. Let's just create a little junk function here. Uh, so we'll just make this a test function, right? So parameters, same syntax. Our returns, our contract with the caller is going to be a little bit different. You have to declare a table variable. So results, and you have to define that it is of a type table. Now you have to actually specify the table. So I would have something like member ID, uh, first name, uh, last name. Just give me a second. Okay. So this is quite different. So inline function would be create function dbo.test returns table as return and then I define my select right select goes here okay so I would do something like uh, select member ID first name last name from dbo.member okay. now I'm not actually going to create this this is a junk function okay I'm just kind of using it as a syntax example now, to do the exact same thing with multi-statements, you have to declare the result set's table. Remember that these are table-valued functions. They return a type table. That means that they have columns and rows. Well, an inline creates those columns based off of the select statement. So it really returns the select statement. Not so in a multi-statement. You have to declare the table. This is a table variable. Then you have to populate the table, and then it returns. Okay, so now here. Now, it, again, we're back to begin and end as re required syntax. Okay. 
I'll summarize the syntax here in just a second between the functions. Let me just show you here. Now I have to insert into the results table. So now I'll put it into the member ID, the first name. You see it's picking up this column list here because that's what it's declared. And last name. And now I can select, I could just copy this same query right there. Now that's not enough. How we tell the multi-statement function, I'm done, finish, is using the return statement. So stops execution and sends the population slash result set of results to the caller. Now the reason we have this return here is we can use branching logic. I can say things like uh, if 1 equals 1 return else and then I want to do something else down here. And so I could have a whole other block of code. We could have another begin uh, and then at the end of that we could say return. So now I could say insert results uh, and member ID. Yeah, I'll just copy. You can see we've already populated it up here. So now I'm going to insert it again and I'm going to put in member uh, 99 Joe Potato. Okay. So notice we have this sort of branching logic. We have that control of flow language that we can put in here. But it has to end in a return. The return says stop executing the function and send whatever is inside of results, whatever is inside of the table variable that you declared, back to the caller. Now let me run this. Go ahead and create it. Um, what did I do wrong? I began. And it doesn't like my putting the return inside the beginning and I always get tripped up with this. Uh, it seems so illogical here. Notice that I'm removing that and I'm just making this now return. It was the same thing. My code wrapping that in a begin and an end is the exact same thing. I basically previously had something like this, but it didn't like that. It wants the return outside of the curly braces. So there's no difference in this and this from an execution standpoint. All right. It's just logically it it's a little silly to me. Okay. Now, when I call dbo.test, I do so with a from clause. And we only get Michael Scott. He's the only member here in the table. Why? One equaled one. You see? We populated the table. There's only one row in that table. And so one equal one, so we stopped the execution. It didn't insert Joe Potato. Now, if we alter this code, okay, change it to alter function, and I say if 1 equals 0, which is going to be false, it's going to fall through. It will go to the else. So let's do that. And so now we have both Joe Potato and Michael Scott in our final result set. It's some basic branching logic. Now, let me show you up here some of the syntax differences between these here. Uh, so syntax differences. One, scalar and multi-statement oh, yeah, require begin and end. Okay. The inline does not. Scalar and multi-statement must have return as the final statement. Remember that in a scalar you actually return a value. You say return 6. Multi-statement you do not return a value. Okay? So that's a difference. So scalar return and you put in whatever the value is you want to return. Inline return select statement, multi-statement, return. It returns the contents of your table variable. Okay. 
Now I wanted to show you, remember I said that you cannot update the database? Watch what happens if I try to do this. Update member, uh, set first name equal Mike, where member ID equals four. So I am trying to update the database. And I told you you cannot do that. Well, let's see if I was right. When I go to alter the function, it returns this error. It's what it calls a side affecting operator meaning that I'm going to change the results of the database and it will not let me do it. Okay. So you cannot issue that. Now, what I might be able to do is I might, depending on my function, uh, I might be able to actually update through that. I can't for this one. Uh, I can update through inline functions. Again, we'll talk about that uh, in chapter six when we get to insert, update, and delete. Uh, let's see, I'm trying to just cover you the basics of the multi-statement in terms of syntax. In the next couple of videos, we will get into how you use them, why you use them. Um, what I really want to share with you uh, a little bit later, maybe not in this video, but uh, in an upcoming video, is how to rewrite stored procedures as multi-statement functions. In fact, that's actually a good example uh, for... A later video uh, when we get into what stored procedures are what stored procedures do in chapter 9 I'm gonna revisit that topic I'm gonna hold off right now if we hadn't gotten into stored procedures but anyway I'm, I'm rambling let's come back in the next video I want to show you how to build a timetable and show you how the functions can help you out